Hi, I'm Frankie, and in this video, I'm going to teach you about Azure AI. We'll go over a quick introduction on who I am, who's this guy teaching you about Azure AI, why Azure, why AI, and how to build, deploy, and manage Azure AI solutions. At the end, we'll go over how you can get started building Azure AI solutions. So jumping in, who am I? I'm Frankie Riviera. You can find me on LinkedIn. I've been practicing Azure for almost 10 years now. The cloud's only been around since 2010. So for Azure to be available since 2010 and me be working on it for most, most of those years, it's kind of wild to think about. I'm a former Microsoft full-time employee. So at Microsoft, I was a senior Azure application innovation specialist. That's a mouthful to say that I helped enterprise businesses with migrating to the cloud, building Azure solutions, and helping them create new and work on existing Azure solutions, both on applications and with AI within Azure. I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP, so I work with the product group for different Azure products to give them feedback and understand how new products are coming out so I can share it publicly and tell the community on how they can take advantage of Azure solutions. I also have a platform called Azure Innovation Station, so this YouTube channel, you're probably watching this right now on my channel, and there's also the online community at azureinnovationstation.com slash community. You can take a look at that. There's a link to join in the description. It's free. So why AI? Well, this AI boom, this new era we live in today, really started in November of 2022 with ChatGPT. ChatGPT came out, and in just two months, by January 2023, there were over 100 million users using ChatGPT. This speaks to the value and the demand for AI solutions. And ChatGPT really started catapulting us into this new AI era. Well, Microsoft invested $13 billion into the company that built ChatGPT, OpenAI. OpenAI has some of the most powerful models called their GPT models. And Microsoft and OpenAI together formed a partnership which catapulted Microsoft to the top of the AI race. So all things that are being built in the cloud with AI are mostly done in Microsoft. In fact, there was a study done, a research study last year that said 45% of new cloud projects that are using AI specifically are all done on Microsoft, 45% of them, versus 34% on AWS and 70% on GCP. So where and how are these new AI projects being built? Well, in the past, we used to use all kinds of different tools and services to build these AI solutions. We used TensorFlow and Jupyter Notebooks, and it, we'd have to, to take all this data to create and build a model, train it, make sure it worked properly, then decide where to host it, how to host it. Are we gonna use containers? Are we not? You know, it, it, How are we exposing the endpoints? How are we integrating it with applications? How are we monitoring it? There's, there's so many different tools that were used in this process. It's, it was a bit of a mess. And Microsoft saw this and said, how can we make it easier? That's why Microsoft came up with Azure AI Foundry. This is the platform, the unified platform to, for developing, deploying, and managing AI solutions. So to build on Azure AI Foundry, some Azure AI solution, you're gonna to wanna to start with three points that I'm gonna go over. First, you wanna select a model. And for those of you who don't know, what exactly is a model? It's an AI model. And what exactly is an AI model? It's just a complex algorithm. A complex algorithm, a computer algorithm, is just some sort of programming code that we've written to act a certain way. And we've fed data into that complex algorithm. It had some sort of output. And then we tell it the output we liked and the output we didn't like to reinforce its learning. And over doing that repetitively multiple times over and over and over again, the algorithm starts to understand patterns to be able to make predictions with a, a percentage of likelihood. And so these, these AI models are just glorified prediction machines. They're prediction algorithms. They know how to predict things. And when we talk about a large language model, like GPT series type models that ChatGPT uses, it predicts words or specifically tokens, which we'll discuss a little bit later. But it, it's predicting text that is supposed to come after one another. So that's, that's all an AI model is. It's just a complex algorithm 
that predicts things based on something that we have, uh, based on data we fed it uh, over and over again. So first you must select a model to build your AI solution. You need to then, you wanna personalize it with your data. There are base models that work great, but you're probably going to want some level of uh, specialization for your solution. And you're also gonna to wanna to add additional functionality. You can just have data and a model and you'd have a chat bot, but you're probably gonna to wanna to build an agent by adding additional functionality or uh, create some sort of more complex solution with multimodal uh, opera, uh, uh, types of uh, functionality that you can add in there. So when it comes to selecting a model, Azure AI Foundry makes this easy with a model catalog. So there's a lot of providers out there. Uh, Microsoft has models, OpenAI has models, Meta has models, X has models. There's a lot. And Azure AI Foundry has them available for you to see and compare, check out the metrics. Um, and the four metrics that I wanna highlight are the quality metric, you know, what are these metrics we're using? And, and quality is one that is super important because it's, it's the accuracy of how these models actually respond to inputs. So uh, is it not hallucinating? Is it clear and understandable? Um, and, and so we wanna make sure it's got high quality when we're gonna use it for our solutions. Safety is how is your AI model responding when it comes to violence or you know sexual content you know it, it does it accept certain inputs what types of outputs does it have we want to make sure our models are safe so that's something we're considering there's also cost this is obvious you might choose your model based on your budget and then throughput uh, throughput is how many tokens it can uh, take through it so the input all the way through the output you want to have a great throughput which would also correlate with this latency, which, in, which would mean to have a very small latency, right? You want to be very quick to respond. When you make a prompt to that AI model, you want to respond quickly. Have a very low latency, have very high throughput. So next, after you've chosen your model that you're gonna to use to build your AI solution, you're gonna to wanna to personalize it with your data. There's two ways to personalize an AI solution. First, you can fine tune your model this is where you optimize the, the, the model itself by actually creating a brand new model. You have your base model, you add more data, and then you use that data to train that base model to create a brand new model. But this is computationally expensive. It, it costs time and money to do, and so it's not always the most, uh, the, the first thing that you should start with when it comes to personalizing your, your, eight, your AI solution with your data. RAG is the best way to start. So RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. So this is all about optimizing the context. It's all about the data that you give your model. So if you have uh, input prompts that you give to your model, it's changing the context of what you're giving it. So it might have the opportunity to pull from a knowledge base where it would retrieve data, it augments the input, and then that new input is going to generate a response. So that's retrieval augmented generation. And RAG is you know, just the easiest, best way to get started. Now when it comes to adding additional functionality, you could just have a chat bot where you have data and you respond back and forth with the, uh, the data that you have from a knowledge base, you respond back and forth with a base uh, AI model, but Agents is a term that you hear a lot about now these days. What is an agent? I'd say an agent is just a chatbot that takes some sort of action for you. It executes some sort of task. And the way in which it does this is by you giving it some sort of tool that allows it to execute those tasks, tasks to take action on your behalf. So this might be a pre-built code or function that you build and you describe it to the agent so the agent knows if I need to use XYZ, I can call that one function that I have available. There's also MCP servers. MCP is a protocol, it's a new standard that is recently released from Anthropic to make agents be able to execute and take advantage of existing programs and solutions that we already have. So if you have some sort of uh, program or solution with lots of APIs that are exposed, 
you could create an MCP server for that and then an agent could use that MCP server to take advantage of that application or that solution that you have. That's another way you can add additional functionality to create agents or complex agent-like solutions. But there's not just agents and chatbots, there's also multimodal AI solutions. Things that use video, images, audio solutions, and in Azure AI Foundry, there's lots of other types of endpoints and existing AI solutions that you could take advantage of. So this is just a list of a handful of different things that are endpoints that you could use for your AI solution to make it more complex. Now when it comes to deploying your AI solution, there's really two main ways you can deploy your AI solution. There's hosting to think about, where your AI solutions runs, and app integration. So how your AI solution is actually used. It's gotta exist somewhere and you're gonna to wanna to take advantage. So let's talk about those. When it comes to hosting, you have two options. There's a serverless model. This is the most common and kind of the direction we're going in for the way AI models are being hosted in the cloud today. And when, we, when you use the service model, you only pay for the input and output tokens. Now, at this point, I wanna describe super simply what is a token. A token is just the smallest unit of measurement that a generative AI model uses. So this token is often, it's, it's a character or it's a partial word, is the, the actual thing that's being measured when we're talking about that, that context which creates your input prompt. And then there's also going to be your output, which is also measured in tokens. And so that total input and output set of tokens are the, the tokens that you end up paying for to determine your, the usage for that AI model. There is also the managed compute option, which is only available if you're using an Azure AI Foundry hub resource, it's called. This is a larger resource, there's a little bit more involved that, that get created as you create a hub resource. It's, it could be good for larger um, organizational scenarios. Uh, the managed compute option allows you to pay for a set of compute, so you just pay for the resources on a virtual machine or multiple virtual machines, and then you can deploy an AI model to that. And it doesn't matter how many input or output tokens you use because you only pay for that managed compute. Next, we talk about app integration. So when we're thinking about how you'd actually take advantage of your AI solution, there is an endpoint that you're gonna get in Azure AI Foundry. That endpoint needs to be consumed somehow in order for you to actually use your AI model. Now the, the playground is a great place to get started, but you can't live there forever. So how do you then actually use what you built in Azure AI Foundry or in the playground so that uh, you can take advantage of it in the real world? The first way is you could just use a script or a workflow to create a, a bash script, a PowerShell script, a logic app that just calls your endpoint and it's just part of your script or workflow to take advantage of your AI model and what you're building. You could have an existing application, so Microsoft Teams or an extension on Outlook could be your UI that consumes from a backend server that you put together that consumes your endpoint from Azure AI Foundry. And lastly, you could create your own custom application. Build your own custom web, uh, web app, a mobile app, desktop app, and then you just have a backend server and then that consumes your, uh, uh, your AI model. I recently did this. I created a video even that you can take a look at on building an, uh, an email reminder agent. So I built a custom UI, I built a backend server that consumes my AI model and also has my tools to take action and execute on tasks. And then it also calls my AI model in Azure AI Foundry. You can take a look at that. I'll put the link somewhere in this uh, video here. Next, I want to talk about managing your AI solutions. So there's four things I want to point on. Tracing, monitoring, evaluations, and guardrails. So let's get into these. Tracing. Tracing is about debugging your AI solution. So if you have an AI agent, it makes calls to tools, it makes calls to knowledge bases, and it could make calls to other agents. This can create pretty complex scenarios where there's just a lot of like natural language involved that is what's being used to make decisions. And so sometimes it's not quite as simple as 
this variable called this variable like a lot of traditional programming instead there was some sort of natural language that was used to determine an, a next step and so it's a little harder for us to understand how exactly is this working so tracing allows us to debug by seeing every step we see how many tokens were used we see how long they took and this helps us fix a solution if it's not working quite the way we want it to monitoring is all about seeing the performance of your AI model. So how many tokens is it using? Uh, how long are the uh, request response life cycles? So what's your latency? How many requests are there period? This can help you improve your AI model and also just help you be aware of your costs, especially if you're using the serverless model. Evaluations are all about measuring metrics for a specific AI model to help your overall AI solution improve. You might have manual evaluations where a QA tester or yourself is taking a look at uh, certain metrics and you'll have questions and answers that you'll give your AI model and you'll determine for yourself, hey, I like this response, I don't like this. And after answering that for multiple types of uh, qu questions and answers that you get it, it there's a metric uh, or a score that can be uh, measured to help you see how well your AI model is performing. There's also the automated version of this where you'd use a large language model to actually measure the output for your AI model and that might be used in a CICD scenario where you your metrics need to pass a certain score for, for different expectations that you set in order to move on to the next stage in a uh, development life cycle. Then there's guardrails. Guardrails, there's things like uh, content filters, prompt shields, uh, blocked lists. Uh, prompt shields protect you from things like injection attacks. Uh, content filters allow you to allow or disallow a certain level of language related to violence or sexual content. Uh, blocked lists is uh, allowing you to block specific words or key terms that you don't want your model to take as input or ever output. So there's lots of different options here in the, the way in which you can protect your AI model. And if you've ever shared or prompt, prompted something edgy to your AI model where uh, it then responded saying, hey, I'm, I'm not going to respond to this or can we start a new conversation, then you've experienced those guardrails before in some AI solution. So now, how do we get started, right? There is, uh, a lot here now on how to build, deploy, and manage these AI solutions, but some of the things you can use to get started is first the templates. In Azure AI Foundry, there's a template section with uh, different types of templates that are on in GitHub repos. You can deploy those and just play around with how those work. There's of course the docs. Any type of software solution or platform has documentation. You can get hands-on. Go to ai.azure.com, which will take you to the Azure AI Foundry portal and you can just start playing around with the playgrounds. And of course, the AIS YouTube channel, which is probably where you're on right now, uh, the Azure Innovation Station channel has a bunch of content that is all about Azure AI, and uh, I'm gonna create more as well. If you are someone who wants help specifically when it comes to these AI agents, I can help you build your first Azure AI agent in less than 30 days. So if this is something you want help with, there's a, a link in the description to connect with me and we can have a conversation about me helping you in your business with building your first AI agent in 30 days or less. If this video was helpful for you, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more content like this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I respond to every comment to help as many people as I can. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.